Hello and good morning. I am so excited about today's topic and I can't wait to get into it. Welcome to Wednesdays with Willa. If this is your first time, welcome. And if you're a regular viewer, thanks so much for tuning in again. This is year six of Wednesdays with Willa. It's an opportunity for me to have a spiritual conversation with you and uh, many times with my special guests that I have on the show. And we talk, we discuss a topic relating to you know, either spiritualism, mediumship, healing, faith, family, or more. And today I am flying solo for the new year. And I can't tell you how much I've been thinking about this the last couple of days. And I hope that you have as much fun with this topic as as I have had getting this ready. Spirit has incredible ways of focusing um, my lectures and also my presentations and uh, these radio show events. So for you, I just want to let a few housekeeping things. Uh, you can tune in on blogtalkradio.com slash Radio, and that is a listen-only feature podcast. And that's uh, an option that many people choose. Or you can tune in on my Facebook page so you can see and hear me live when I go uh, live on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern on my Facebook page, Willow White Medium. It also goes to the Lilydale Assembly Facebook page as well as my YouTube channel go gets uploaded later on in the day. So lots of ways for you to tune on into the show every week. And uh, as I said, I typically have guests on the show. Today, I am flying solo because I wanted to make sure I, I was able to do this particular topic just, justice in the nuances that I, I wanted to flavor the show today with. Okay, so without further ado, I want to announce the topic is divine excellence. And you, from that title, you may be going, what on earth? Divine excellence. What could that possibly mean? Well, in my life lately, I have noticed that things are kind of converging in that place of understanding duality when it comes to that version of the royal self, the divine self, and then that lower human self that uh, we, we may very easily get involved in and entrenched in. And it's something that especially at this time of year with the with the new year, we're slopping off the old and moving into the new. And uh, we, we last week I uh, had Ron Skaronsky on the show and we talked about a spiritualist guide to 2023. So if you haven't had a chance to watch that show already, I encourage you to look back in the archive videos that th they do stay posted on my Facebook page, but you can look on the videos tab as well and uh, glean from that what you will, because they had some, some great uh, concepts and ideas that were shared uh, last week. Now for this week, as I said, we're gonna be focusing on divine excellence and wearing that crown of divine excellence and what is involved with merging the, the world, and taking it from that duality sense and choosing and really making the decisions in your life that help you to take on that divine excellence. So in terms of this, I'm sure a lot of people have, have uh, been involved with fairy tales before or watched the movies. We're all kind of obsessed to some extent on, on oh, well, you know, will the princess uh, get get her, her prince and uh, there, there are those kinds of concepts of um, Cinderella and Snow White, where they are they are um, ladies uh, in their own right, uh, princesses in their own right, and th that they have been relegated to mundane tasks and having to be slaves or servants for other people because they're external. Uh, forces at work in the form of stepmothers or, or other villains uh, that that uh, are malevolent and and have evil intent and want to keep a person down and that they're able to have you know either fairy godmothers or the seven dwarves or you know there's some aspect that comes in that helps them to achieve a higher way but what I find very interesting is that these particular princesses 
are gracious and giving and that, that there is a higher space that they are living from even while they're in the drudgery, even while they are in the servant mode. And that's a, that's a, a very interesting duality, the dichotomy of life. You know, there are people that are living those kinds of realities in their lives here and now that they feel that they have been relegated to some sort of um, servant in to other people in their life. And, and maybe, maybe you're one of those people, maybe you've had resentments or, or maybe you've just been cultivating as best you can having a royal presence. Now, a lot of times when we think about kings and queens of the past, we think of them in the dictator role. We think of them as reigning supreme and everybody's, um, you know, puppets that, that must do their whim and be at their whims and at their pleasure. But there is a higher version of the king and the queen or the prince and the princess that I want to talk about today because uh, yes, within the duality of uh, the prince and the pauper, we have that, but we also have that within ourselves, uh, the higher forms that we can choose, that divine excellent form, whether you are the pauper or if you are the prince. And there, I'll just throw in another one, uh, Princess and the Pea. I <laughs> you all know that story, the Princess and the Pea. So in, in that story, you have to prove that you're a princess by be whining the next morning that oh, you slept on all these many mattresses, but you're so sensitive and blue blooded that you could uh, feel the pee and it's bruised you beyond belief. So we're not talking about having to prove that you're a princess or a prince by saying, oh, I'm going to complain about the least little thing. That is not the higher form. Today, we're focusing on the higher form because there are kings and queens in history that have been benevolent. They have benefited their communities, their kingdoms, their territories, and they've been able to do incredible things to make a union happen with people, teamwork happen within people, and uh, the, it's something that we can do over our own territory, be that our own home or our own body, this autonomy that we have over how we feel about ourselves and how we relate to other people. So we're going to dive into that. Let me just get this shared to the, the Facebook page of Lily Dell real fast, and then I'll pick this up. Um, so we can dive into how you can be expressing divine excellence and get excited about what you can bring to your life in that regard. It's so funny to me how we could get lost in the mundane thinking so easily that we say, oh, well, who am I to be the prince or the princess? Or who am I to be that person that will receive the benefit of life? Who am I to have that? We're going to discuss that a bit. Uh, if you have had those feelings within yourself, uh, put that into the, to the Facebook chat. Let me know how you're feeling about those things, because I do know what it, it means for myself to want to relegate myself to um, the peasant class versus the royal class. I've had the different instances in my life where I haven't felt comfortable taking on uh, more of the queen or princess role with things, things of who am I to have that divine excellence in my life? And I wanna encourage all of you today to just uh, be flexible during this particular talk. So when we're cultivating that mind and body at the same time within ourselves, there is that place within our participation that we have to accept that we have been ordained by God to do a higher work. Now, some of the, pe the people who are watching today are developing mediums or developing healers, or they love to pray for uh, their family and friends or for themselves, or they have 
uh, had person pass that's close to them that they want to have divine connection with still, or maybe you're in your own spiritual enfoldment, developing your meditation practices, your routines that build you up and help you to be stronger in the various moments of your life, because we all have struggles. We all have things that are difficult, that we feel insurmountable, and we don't know how we're going to get through. And some of you are in the questing mode. You uh, are like knights of old that are, are on the spiritual quest. And you're coming across different instances of people and, and how people run their own castle and how, the, how you would like to uh, change that reality within yourself. So for today's podcast, I just want you to envision and understand that you symbolically can consider yourself royalty during this time, that you have been duly knighted and sworn in, however you want to, do, to, to say this, that you yourself are royalty. And when I say that, that you are royalty, you may notice that your posture changes, that you change the position of your head and you, your shoulders may go back, your head may go up a little bit more. And that is a posture that for those who are meditators understand that we kind of put ourselves into alignment. When that happens, all the chakras go into alignment, the spine is straightened, yet you know, still relaxed to some extent. But there's that sense of the regal posture that you assume when you become royalty. And in that position, your head establishes your perspective. You are no longer in a slouch mode. You're no longer in that space of making decisions from your head down, um, you know, having to, you know, handle life in, in a drudgery way. When, when we say, I am royalty, I am in that space of excellence, your head and posture align you for that. So there's a reason why your head sits at the top of, of your body and it's supposed to lead you. Now, I don't mean that that is, that your mind is supposed to lead you into all kinds of different rabbit holes. The head being that the, that space of the crown chakra and knowing that we all have this beautiful crown chakra that connects us with the divine. We each one of us have a crown that has been given to us on a spiritual energetic uh, way that is right there at the top of our head. And you can allow that channel to open up while we're talking today, you may feel a funnel of light and an awareness of connection with a divine in a beautiful, strengthening way. So there, there's a difference from living from that place versus, let's say, the, the base of your brain that a lot of people refer to as your lizard brain, as the instant gratification of I want what I want. Uh, there's that kind of um, um, it, the, the impulsive and greedy space that, that lives, that it, it has its other uses too, but it's, it's known more for that. Versus the prefrontal cortex is where you have decision-making and empathy, and there's a lot of goodness that happens in that space, which happens in, along the brow chakra space, that mind's eye and how we truly envision and move ahead in intuitive ways. So we're in an elevated space, just talking about those two chakras and where the crown placement is uh, for an actual flat crown, <laughs> but it's, it's all right through here. You know, it's, it's that sense of let's send the light upward, all points upward, and that we have that connection automatically with divine excellence, that we can bring our awareness to that divine excellence and move with purpose and 
practice that divine design of our lives rather than in, in that space of desperation of what's going to happen in the next moment. How am I going to get through this family drama or trauma or work issues or the neediness that other people have of me in these times or, or the confusion you may feel? You, it's going into that space of the divine connection, the intuitive connection that will assist. So I found myself in different moments cha deliberately changing my posture. I've been doing a lot of study of, of the vagus nerve and alignment of those things and what will optimize me on physical health levels, mental health levels, spiritual health levels, all of it. And there does seem to be this alignment of recognition of posture and what I bring to that. And it's so funny because um, uh, yesterday, one of my children, there, uh, a little quote that they have is, the world is full of a number of things. I'm sure we should all be as happy as kings. And I was like, oh, that's just it, cherry on top that I needed to talk about this. <laughs> but if you can understand, yes, the world is full of many things. If we could just be as happy as kings, the divine right, uh, the king and queen understanding that comes when you are aligned with God, you can feel that flow through your very being um, in the mantle of light and love that is on your shoulders and that divine consciousness that comes with that. So when we believe that we are special and important, there is a particular way about us that uh, becomes magnetic. There's a divine magnetism that occurs during that time. People become more attracted to you in those moments when you walk with purpose, when you have that um, regal bearing as you proceed in life. And it makes you pause when you are recognizing that purpose. And that this is not ultimately about how you look. This isn't about fancy clothes. This isn't about necessarily having the robes of a king or a queen or uh, the jewels <laughs> that are associated with that. This is about the divine uh, garments that we wear the aura that expands beyond that. I, I don't know if you have been fortunate enough to meet people who don't have very much on a material level, but they have a regal bearing. There is a pride, a divine pride, not a, a arrogance pride, but there is a pride of, of making sure that they are clean and that they are conscious of their words and their deeds and there's goodness in them and, and how they uh, are proceeding with people. And I'll never forget, I was on a mission trip uh, into the Yucatan Peninsula many years ago now. And we were in a Mayan village and uh, we were there. Uh, the, there were doctors and nurses that I'd traveled with and they were offering medical care to the villagers and uh, that we were involved with helping the clinic after a hurricane that had been come through and there was a, a house that was going to be built as well in the community. And one of my favorite things to do was uh, to invite the, ch the children to the clinic. Uh, they would come and they uh, wanted me to draw pictures. I knew a bit of a, a smattering of, of Spanish from my years in school, and which helped me. The translator uh, and, and I were the only ones that knew Spanish. <laughs> so anyway, the children would come and I would draw different animals on paper for them and then they would color them in. And every day that they were there for that hour or so, I noticed that they were glowing, uh, clean clothes, their, their hair, uh, was clean, everything, uh, they were joyous children. And that there, I had been in some of the houses there, they lived in, you know, huts or shacks or however you want to put that, but uh, many of them, uh, the houses were only as big as, let's say, 
a, a living room. And that's what they were living in and sleeping in hammocks. And uh, I slept in a hammock while I was there too. Uh, they didn't have much in terms of that. And they made sure that their homes were clean, that their clothing was clean, their children were clean. And there was uh, an honoring of each other that we had in those moments. There was respect. And it was just a beautiful thing to see because they didn't have nearly as much as um, people here in our first world cult countries do. And they all were little princes and princesses. And it's just beautiful that we can have that recognition, whether it's about the stuff, whether it's about the castle and all the finest horses and all of those things. It's really, it's really not about those things. It's about what kind of energy you're bringing to your interactions and expressions of who you are, and that we each have a crown, whether you can see it or not. Whether uh, you watch those Miss America shows or the pageants, and oh, that you know, only one person can have the crown. <laughs> It's not like that when it comes to spiritual things. You all have a crown. You all have a crown chakra. You all have divine excellence that you can access. And there are so many shows out there. Like, uh, what was it? I, I don't have TV, but sometimes at other people's houses, there's what is, uh, say yes to the dress. And they'll say, I just want to look like a princess on the day of my wedding. And I want him, you know, the groom, whatever, to, to see me in that way. And, 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 and the, another reason I chose to do this topic is a friend of mine, her husband got her a portrait of herself as a princess. There are these things you can do now where you can put the, the face in on things. And, she, and so she's a princess because of this uh, painting. And it's just, whether it's like that or, or not, I just want you to think in terms of we all have the opportunity to be the princess or the prince, as the case may be, and that it's already been given to us by the divine, by the God, um, the father, mother, God, however you want to look at that, and that we choose a crown um, that would wear this crown and you have to keep our head up. Because if we lean forward, what happens? The crown falls off. And it's as if we forget who we are in those moments when we're down like this. We forget who we are again. And other people don't see us that way, uh, the royalty. They, they see us in that space. And, and the way they treat us changes as well. So if you're looking to have people treat you with respect, not so that you can be the queen of hearts off with their heads, that kind of dictatorship. But if you want people to look at you differently, if you want to have a different view of your life, change your posture and understand that there is a crown on your head. That each one of us, we will see the divinity within each person, the idea of, of namaste. Uh, but it's, it's that the God within you recognizes the God within me. And we see that mirroring back that you start to see all of these beautiful lords and ladies that are around you. And that you see that soul that is shining forth, that the divine excellence in yourself and, and others. And when you learn to wear your crown symbolically, you put it on every day. And you're going to stand taller when you wear that crown. You're going to stand with purpose. And you're going to walk a straighter path and you're going to make sure that you constantly stay in that position uh, of that regal understanding, the, the benevolent ruler of your body and of yourself. And it ultimately helps to let other people know, uh, as I said before, that what you say or do to me matters, that, that I need to be respected. And you ultimately have to believe that you wear that crown every day. And we have to align ourselves 
physically, but also mentally and energetically to accept that we do rule over our territory. So what is our territory? Our territory is our body, first and foremost, right? We, we have uh, this territory, our body, our particular temple. And so what we put into it food-wise and the things that we say out of that, that mouth uh, word-wise, those are all very important things in this particular temple of divine excellence. And the things that we are interacting with other territories, other bodies that are involved in our external environment. So yes, we have our territory of our, our body and of our home and how we have this power to make decisions about our territory, about that body and about our mind and how we're living and how we're going to have a perspective of affirming that status of divine excellence, that royalty, if you will, and respect, and that you can affirm yourself. First and foremost, affirm yourself. And I thought I'd share real quickly, there's this cute book uh, called You Are Special. It's a children's book. Uh, my children have aged out of this book, but I still kept it <laughs> for me. <laughs> I do. That's how it works. But in this book, it's, it's really interesting uh, because there is um, a community of Wemex and they are uh, wooden people that were carved by a woodworker. And in this world, if you will, well, um, the, if you like what somebody's doing, you give them a star. If you don't like what someone's doing, you give them a dot. And some people have dots all over them. And so they are considered horrible outcasts, if, if you will, but judgment of behaviors. And then you have people who have the stars and, oh, they look so good. Or, oh, they like have this sort of thing. And, and the, yet there's one Wemmick in particular that does, I'm going to spoil the story for you, that doesn't, uh, that if somebody puts a dot or a star on her, it just falls off. It doesn't stick. And they're, they're, one of the uh, Wemmix notices this about her, and he's one of the people who has the dots all the time, and he notices that her, that doesn't stick. Somebody might try to put a dot or star on her, and it doesn't stick, and he knows that she goes to visit the woodworker, the wood, the wood carver, and uh, that it seems to help her and that she's a very nice person, a good person. There's a sincerity and yet she doesn't, and the way she carries herself is very different from the other Wemex. And eventually he decides that he's going to go visit the woodcarver. And he starts visiting more and more and having discussions with him. And he notices that after he's had those opportunities to speak with the woodcarver, the maker of him, so to speak, that the dots fall off, that the dots don't stick. And he comes to that recognition with the, the wood carvers, the, make, the makers, capital M maker, um, understanding that the stars and the dots don't matter. It's only that relationship with the divine that matters. And when you understand that, you walk in a certain way. You speak in a certain way. There is a confidence and a humble pride that is in a, a person uh, that is of great respect and great delight. And so we all have that opportunity. Uh, so I'm not saying, oh, you have to have this crown and get into the materialism that we're not getting into that space. We're getting into the divine excellence space where the only thing that matters in those times are your connection with the divine, the, the connection with God and yourself. And that you listen more to that divine connection through the crown than you would listen to other people. Uh, if they can't see your royalty, it's okay. You're still going to act with benevolence, you're still going to act uh, in that royal way. And it is yours forevermore. And that even if you you forget and your head goes down for a moment because oh, you know, you just got into that place of of 
feeling beaten down by your thoughts or the words of uh of others or actions of uh, things that are going on remember all you need to do is straighten up and remember who you are that you are a person a soul of divine excellence and that that will help to give you victory a crown is symbolic of victory when we have victory over a struggle, whether it be a physical struggle, a mental struggle, or an energetic struggle that's going on, there's a victory that comes from having the crown on your head. And it, it also symbol, is symbolic of your divine right, your connection with the divine, but also that which is yours by divine right, God chosen, and that is ordained and sustained. And it is it's a sim symbol of the divine love and the great wealth that is in and available, is in your energy, available to you at all times. Even though you may wear, uh, you know, the clothes of a poor person, <laughs> the rags, the pauper, right? You can still have that true bearing of knowing who you are on the inside and that that will align you now for some of you this may have been an uncomfortable thought to think that you were are deserving of a crown i know that uh for a good portion of my early life i uh had wanted to be a princess right we all as little girls <laughs> that's something you know we want and i remember constructing a crown but i i never thought that i could do that in real life um, you know, you, you, the reality sets in with things and I didn't know how to be that with other people. But as the years are going on, I start to recognize that whether anybody else sees my crown or not, that I am aware of my crown and that I can speak from that place of authority within myself and how I relate to you all, how I relate to other people. And it's very precious to me that I have that perspective now and the becoming more comfortable with divine excellence in my own life. And I want that for you ultimately so that you can release yourself from those old thoughts. Maybe they're thoughts from 2022. Maybe they're thoughts from years and years and decades and decades that you're up against. But just know that victory is already yours, that you've already been given the crown of excellence in your life. And if none of this is sunk in yet, I'm going to ask you two questions, okay? So two questions for you. If, if the crown idea has been uncomfortable for you, as I've been talking about this today, or if at some other point you're thinking, oh, it's a little uncomfortable, and that you have been maintaining that idea of the pauper, of the servant, of, of um, and mind you, there's nothing, of being of, there's nothing wrong with being of service to other people at all, at all. I'm of service, I'm, I'm a mom. <laughs> so I love service to other people, but the way you're of service, um, it it can really that perspective uh, can change where you can see the good you are doing for your people. There's a difference. So if you are still in that mindset of the lack in your life, ask yourself, what has this perspective cost you? What has this perspective cost you to live in that idea of lack, a lack of connection with the divine that you felt or lack of connection with your life and how you want to plan and build and process and progress? What has the perspective of lack done? What does it cost you? And the second question is, what do, do you want to align with now? So you, as the king or queen of your territory, can choose to align yourself with other countries, <laughs> with other, other kings and queens that you know 
uh, in and around your circle or, or even uh, in a faraway land. But what do we want to align ourselves with now? What do you want to do? Do you want to align yourself with that respect, that humble pride, that recognition of feeling divinely guided in your life and divinely loved all along your path? That the angels and that the universe and that others are supportive of you, that there is a higher version of royalty that you connect with, the version of divine excellence. And help this sink in a little further, I'll read um, a, a brief passage of this. And if, if it resonates with you to close your eyes during this time, then please do so if it helps you. Um, take a few deep breaths. Knowing that the mind of God is my mind, I clothe myself in the radiant garments of light and love. I clothe myself in the everlasting vesture of truth and love. Each day I select my mood, my spiritual garments with care and understanding. In the majesty of divine excellence, a new mood is chosen and worn. I throw the old garments away. I do not try to repair the devitalized garments of yesterday, knowing the glory and the beauty of the everlasting one is the identity and individuality of my being. I open the whole consciousness of my being to express charm, wit, grace, good humor, and the iridescent joy of life. The garments of my royal character contain no dark pockets of self-pity, self-condemnation, no drab, shoddy, wrinkled thoughts cloud the radiance of the glowing spirit within. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and I do change my mental garments each day. In truth and in love, the divine within puts the best robe upon me. I wear my best robe every day. The shoes of divine understanding give me substance and stability. The ring of authority is on my hand. I worship the divine in the beauty of holiness. I am girded round about with God's love, strength and power and clad in the spiritual garments of righteousness. I am protected from every evil and false suggestion. I wear the crown of rejoicing and no man can take it away. I go forth and meet the all good, the divine in every living soul. Today, I wear the white and glistening garments of the immaculate healing divine. And there is harmony, healing, and peace wherever I go. Isn't that beautiful? You are royal. 
You are of divine excellence. And never forget that you are God ordained, God sustained, God maintained, and that light and truth surround you now and forevermore. May you enjoy this divine excellence of being, that you enter into the majesty of your soul and see that light shining forth in yourself and others. I wish you a good day, my kings and queens, my princes and princesses. Until we meet again, have a beautiful week, and I'll see you next week for Wednesdays with Willa. Lots of love to you and many blessings to all.